Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. So it's Friday of the second week of Lent. How is it going? Reminder, don't eat any meat today and really try to make a day of sacrifice your focus. And honestly, if you have not gone to confession in a while, please go. Today or any Friday, I think, is beautiful. If we made Friday more about Jesus, remembering outside of Lent, by the way, this isn't just during Lent, but every Friday. I don't know if you know, but it used to be a mortal sin to eat meat on Friday. Isn't that insane? Why did we change all of these reverent acts? I don't get it. That should be now. We need that more than ever in this gluttonous culture where we just want what we want and we have it whenever we want it. I know mortal sins are really bad things, but We've taken away that passion in our life. We, you know, we reflect on it during Lent, maybe, maybe, maybe not, (laughs) you know, let's be honest. Are you really reflecting on the passion? We should be. When I pray the rosary every day, I am only praying the sorrowful, sorrow, I can never say that word. Sorrowful mysteries. Why? Well, because that's what this whole season is about. It's to remind us of what Jesus has done. And if we if we ate meat on Friday and it became a mortal sin, don't you think we would be thinking a whole heck of a lot more throughout the year about God and about Jesus and what he did for us, how he saved us from ourselves and our sins, eternal damnation. I mean, it's not a small thing here. So a lot of people, so this is what they did. They didn't make it a a punishment as a mortal sin anymore. And they said that you could replace it with another sacrifice. I don't know. I just think it's simple to just not eat meat on Friday. And if you're someone like my husband who goes along with me (laughs) on these trips, he's not fully practicing, but we say grace together and he helps along the journey with me eating not meat. That that was the worst sentence structure (laughs) I think I've ever put together. He goes along to get along, I think. And so it was funny last night. He said, so what are we going to have tomorrow? And I said, I've got another bag of shrimp. And he laughed because that's all we've been doing from Ash Wednesday to Friday to this Friday. And it's not even that much, but my husband is a meat eater. And he's trying to eat more fish and seafood because It's better for you, the omega-3s versus the omega-6s that you get in some of the saturated fats. But shrimp filled with cholesterol, he just wants something different. And I'm trying to go find a place that I can get wild-caught fresh fish. 
And I think I have to go online because I just don't have any kind of fish market in the burbs of Chicago that are close. But I digress. I think one thing that I'm trying to point out is Friday should be a different day. We should have one day a week, every single week, 52 weeks out of the year, where we think about God, we think about Jesus and his passion. I don't care if it's you thinking about him hanging on the, on the cross or having one of those big blunt nails hammered through his holy hands and feet or the scourging where he was just covered in blood, unrecognizable, almost dead. If we actually thought about that, instead of thinking about the fact that we can't have that steak on a Friday night, our lives would be different. I wish it was a mortal sin because I think people would pay attention. Maybe. I don't agree with the loosening of that practice. Even fasting before mass. It used to be the night before you couldn't eat anything. You couldn't even have water, I don't think. Maybe a little bit of water, but that's it. Not just an hour before receiving communion. And I myself have done this where I have eaten and I've calculated up until the point that I would receive Jesus. That's the hour, by the way. So some people think that the hour starts at the beginning of mass, but the hour actually starts at the moment we receive Jesus into our bodies. So if it's daily mass and it's an eight o'clock mass and you usually receive Jesus about 820, 825, that's the time that you go back. So you shouldn't have anything from 725 forward for that hour. And I've done that calculation because when I go to daily mass, I want to have, at the time I was drinking coffee and I wanted to have some cream in my coffee and that's not fasting. So I would drink up until the very last minute and then I would stop. And isn't that really defeating the purpose? (laughs) Isn't it funny how we, I don't know, lose the meaning of the the penitential day of Friday and how we forget to think about Good Friday or we really forget about the fact that we are fasting because we want to empty ourselves, soul, mind, body, and have no food in our stomach so that when we receive Jesus himself into our bodies, our souls, our minds, that he can take hold and he can disperse throughout us without coffee and cream, eggs and bacon, and other stuff in there. I mean, it just makes sense. And we just don't do it. We don't think or bring into our heart the true suffering that Jesus went through and the true meaning of that Eucharist and why we're at Mass. So this is a reminder to please really reflect on the passion today. And when you are not eating that meat, be grateful to God and say, this is a small sacrifice, Lord, based on what you've done in for us for our salvation, for our eternal soul. And then when you go to Mass, I hope last Sunday you didn't attend robotically. But this time, pay attention. Pay attention to the purple that's hopefully draped all over things in your parish, over the cross, the crucifix itself, over all of the statues. I mean, this is a time for us to miss the Lord 
to think about him, his death, and all that he did during that passion time. And the passion is from the point that he was accused and they let Barabbas go all the way up until the crucifixion. By the way, one thing that I do every Lent is I watch the Passion of the Christ. You could go, I hate Amazon people, I hate them. But guess what? That's the only place that my book is sold. Urgh. Well, and Barnes and Noble, but no one seems to go there anymore. But you can go on Amazon and you can watch the Passion of the Christ online. It does cost a little bit. But nothing like that movie will, um, that's another bad sentence structure. Let me (laughs) me go back. There's nothing like that movie that will remind you of exactly what he went through. And I cry every time and I feel it in my heart and my soul. And for that, I am grateful to Mel Gibson and Jim Caviezel and all of the people who participated in that beautiful, beautiful movie. And by the way, those visual intense scenes are what I pull up during my prayer and during the rosary. I think about those horrific scenes. So let's Really focus on Friday and what Jesus did for us. And don't forget to go to confession. He did it for our sins to be forgiven. But you can't have your sins forgiven if you don't get your butt into confession. You have to participate in this one, my dear friends. Run there, please. Your soul your mind, and your body will thank you. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, Heavenly Father, put in our heart Jesus. Help us remember everything that he did for us and to run to him in confession and to remember all of the pain and the suffering that he did for the love of us. Help us to really think of your son and your gift to us and our souls. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. I love you. Go be love. Think about Jesus and what he did for us and how many people don't know him. And let's live his life today. Let us allow him to live through us, in us, so that we can be the light to people in this dark, dark world. Okay, everyone, I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired Friday of Lent.